The, the theory is that if Aang were to not have gotten stuck in the iceberg, that Princess Yue would have been the next Avatar. Before we get started with the episode, we're going to hear from our sponsor, Factor. Eating better is now easier with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef catered, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. There's no prepping, no cooking, and no cleanup. Head to factormeals.com slash Rebecca50 and use code Rebecca50 for 50% off. That's code Rebecca50 at factormeals.com slash Rebecca50 for 50% off. This episode was brought to you by BetterHelp. Therapy is a powerful tool that I and many other individuals in the world have benefited from. And if you're willing to give therapy a try, why not try BetterHelp? BetterHelp is completely online. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WYB today to get 10% off on your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P slash W-Y-B for 10% off. Now let's get started with today's new episode. <laughs> Every time it starts and I'm like, wait, I feel like a deer in the head. No, real, real <laughs> talk. Like, like, wait a second. I, I usually I start remember. it myself, so I'm just like, what do I say to start this <laughs> day? How do, how do you kick off things? I do that all the time. And sometimes I'll, pl I'll plan it and I'm like, Oh, we're starting. Shoot. What's that? I don't <laughs> the remember. The moment's passed. You're just like, it's <laughs> like, already started. I hi, missed it. Juju. Um, hi, Juju. All of you might know Juju better as Straw Hat Goofy. And I, I really want to ask, like, how you got into, mm. like, how Straw Hat Goofy even became a name. But just before we even get started, so, like, yeah. you are a movie reviewer and, like, a movie critic. Yeah. And you, I... Literally, when I thought about it, I was like, I don't know anything about movie critics or anything. Because as people know, like, the, the whole podcast is about, you know, shining light on how difficult people's jobs and mm -hmm. lifestyles, like, how, you know, e everyone kind of goes through a rough time. And yeah. we don't even really realize what so many different professionals deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And at first, I was like, oh, movie critic. Uh. <laughs> then I was like, wait. <laughs> I actually know nothing about what it is <laughs> to be a movie critic and a movie reviewer. And I ask people on Instagram, I'm like, what questions would you have for someone in this job? And there's so many. Yeah. Because no one knows. Nobody knows. So I want to Except know, other critics. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I want to know, like, how, obviously, how you got the Straw Hat name, but mm. also, like, how you decided to come into this profession. And then once you get there, I want you to tell me, like, what it is that you do yeah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> like what, what do you what do what is this like what how does that do you mean? job this job yes like how does the like I, I have a list of questions so if you see me looking at my phone no yeah that is it i because, have my phone like yeah adhd my, i'm yeah. not gonna remember them all but yeah, i understand i also thing. you know me i ramble so i'm gonna stop talking now this is gonna be a very bad show because i ramble too <laughs> it's just gonna be us just like in a circle no it's great it's gonna be perfect <laughs> or it's gonna be great i love it go ahead i'm ready i'm yeah, ready so uh Funny enough, like, one thing about me is that, like, I love movies, like, to my very core. It took me a long time to, like, realize that because I was trying to make it out the hood playing basketball. But um, it was always, like, a I matter of time that. if I met someone that I was going to talk to them about movies. So right. they've always been, like, a very important part of my life, right? I was a kid who was bullied a lot, didn't really have a lot of friends, so I kind of, like, suck solace in film and, like, made friends with the people behind the screen. And so it was also my way to connect with people outside of my room because everybody likes movies, everybody's watched them. So my conversation series where I was like, hey, did you watch this thing? Let's talk about that because I don't watch football. I didn't really know much about sports at the time. And uh, I don't, a lot of my people like cars for some reason. So yeah. it was just my only like way to like connect with people. And so, uh, but um, for your first question, where did my name come from? It's very interesting. Uh, my best friend actually gave me that name. Really? Uh, yeah, his name is Ryan, shout out to Ryan. Uh, you know, we've been best friends since ninth grade, and this was around 2016. I was in the market for a new Instagram username, just a username in general, because the right. one I had sucked. Uh, it was awful. <laughs> the ones that we made in middle school always are. It wasn't even the one that I made in middle school. <laughs> Worst, I was in college. And so, like, no! I have no excuse to hide behind this awful <laughs> username. It was Mr. Quote 123. Mr. Quote, Mr. Quote one, one, two, two, three. three. And he was like, why do you call yourself that? Because I quote a lot of movies. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so I, I hated this name so much, but like I couldn't figure out like what was the name that like 
felt like me, a username that I could like right. keep forever. And Juju Green Eleven is just literally my name and like an eleven yes. at the end of it. So I'm just like, it's not creative. It's not creative no. at all. And plus, it's my email. So I'm just like, don't email me, please. <laughs> uh, actually, that's, I don't even use that anymore. Whatever. Um, <laughs> But uh, I remember it was in 2016, I was binge watching uh, One Piece. Mm -hmm. And everybody know who knows me knows I'm a massive One Piece stan. It's my favorite thing on this my entire planet. It's all oh, we gonna talk. <laughs> he and I are gonna be best <laughs> friends, best friends. Absolutely. And so I'm binge watching the show and as like, you know, the main character's name is Straw Hat Luffy. And uh, everyone who also knows me, I was working at Disneyland at the time, knows that like Goofy Movie is an obsession of mine. I love a goofy movie. Avery also loves the. You guys were meant to be friends. See, okay. okay. Yeah, see? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Buddies, besties. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so like with my best friend who knows me better than like everyone on this planet, uh, he knows that I love both of these things. And like one day we were just kind of like hanging out, watching TV and joking around, and then just he just goes, "Whatever, straw hat, goofy." Because he knows I love one oh. piece of that, so he put them both together just effortlessly, and I was like. Say That's that again, so bro. <laughs> funny. Like, that, I know someone else who did like literally the same thing. Her name is like Olivia Van Foxface. Oh. Um, because I love when that. her friend was drunk, he was like, he she's like, This is a beautiful woman. Like my friend Jess is a beautiful woman. She's a fox. She yeah. Well, so <laughs> her he always used to joke that she looks like a mix of Megan Fox and Olivia Wilde. And when he was drunk, wow. he was like, Oh, whatever. Olivia <laughs> Man Fox face. And like that she's like, wait. That's good. <laughs> wait a I second. I like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's her that's her handle now. As see, a that's creator. see, that's the best way to get a handle is just have someone <laughs> close to you just give it to you. They just know us so like in a drunken the people stupor, who have known us our whole lives, like they know us they best for know us. us so Even to this well. day, if I'm like live on TikTok or whatever, he'll pop in because he loves to support. And he'll oh. say, like, tell people how you got the name. Tell them tell them where the name comes from. I expect the royalties off of that. See, you that's know? so supportive. My brother won't even follow me. Oh, uh -huh. oh. <laughs> It's what? because when I started social media mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm going to quit teaching. He was like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> and I'm like, I can see that. no, 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 no. He goes like, I love you, but like. I don't know if, if I he, can like. If he I, follows I'm like, you, it's admitting he's yeah, wrong. Yeah, <laughs> now now it's like a like three years later, it's like a, a running bit. He's like, I just keep digging myself deeper in the yep. hole, but yep. like I'm stubborn and I can't admit. <laughs> I can't. I can't it. admit that I was wrong. The day he follows you is gonna be a glorious. Day. I know. He even has my note. He like he already followed me on Instagram from like before. Step one. He muted me. <gasps> <laughs> Half a step. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a step I'm one. I'm <laughs> muted on my brother's Instagram feed. He's, he's that like, stubborn. Yeah, he's like, I'll watch your stories because like I want to know what's going on with you. But like I also I call him like too many times during the day. Right. He only lives ten minutes away from me. Oh yeah, so he's um, like, I don't want to know this. He's part like, of I don't you. need to know anything else. You tell me everything every day. Right. I don't need to. He's like, you post every day, Rebecca. It's a reminder like, of how wrong he is. That's so. It's true. a reminder. Every that's post is so a reminder of how true. wrong he is. He he's doesn't want to see that every day. Here, like. He's in LA. Okay. Yeah. So y'all like, just. He's been experiencing. Like he met Dan last night, mm. and he was like, oh, he's meeting Michaela later. Like okay. he's so excited. ADHD brain. I'm sorry. That's okay. But, I also uh, have it. Da so Dan uh, was also on a podcast of mine. Yeah. He was literally like the second guest that I ever I've ever had. It was a great show. Dan great is, show. Yes. Dan is amazing. Yes. Was it recording audio? <gasps> No. Oh, but, you, but was your camera recording any Cam audio the at all? The camera was recording audio. But, but but so you have to go to Adobe AI. Really? Adobe Podcast AI okay. fixes all the audio. I'll send you a link. Please. I've learned all the things. <laughs> Please. I've learned all the things. It sounds so yeah. horrible off the camera. No, I got you. I need the help. I'll show you. Okay, yeah. Dan, we we got it, yeah. buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. got it, buddy. I did, I did an episode with Dan too, and he told me I knew the stories that make him cry because I just know Dan, uh, and so I made him <laughs> I made him tell both of them. And they did really well. Like, John Stamos reposted it. Nice. Jesse Williams reposted it. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can never remember her name, but Glenda the Good Witch um, oh. from Wicked. Oh, uh, um, the, 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 the Christian Chenoweth. Yes. I love Christian I'm Chenoweth. I'm obsessed with her. I love I, Shout out to Glee her. when I found out about all that. Yes. Shout out to yes. Glee. I love her. But it was it was really good. Um, Dan and I got into a heated debate about movies like Inside Out and WALL-E. Yeah? A apparently, he doesn't like WALL-E. What? Dan... Pop Meyer does not like Wally. -E. He hates it. And that's my favorite Pixar movie. That's crazy from the man who created the minions. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? 
So we got to a very nice discussion about that. And up until now, I was very sad that the world probably wasn't going to get to see it. Wow. Yeah. It, no, it no, blew, no. I'll show, you, I'll show you how to fix it. But Please. that actually brings me to a question that people, people Ooh, yes. were asking. Like, when you're reviewing a movie, mm -hmm. like, how much does your own <clears throat> bias of, like, what you like in movies come into play? Like, how, like, how does the whole, like, remo reviewing and critiquing movies, mm -hmm. how does that work? And then, like, how does your own bias come into play with that? That is a really good question because I feel like, in a way, your bias has everything to do with the movie okay. because, like, your love of a movie is very subjective, right? Right, Like, I've yeah. come out and said, like, like, movies like Ready Player One. I tell people all the time I'm a compromise when it comes to that movie because it's so nerdy and so geeky and so many references that there's no way for me to not love that movie. Oh, I love and that. sometimes I struggle with say, like pointing out its flaws, which it has flaws. Like don't get me wrong. I'm sure every movie has flaws. Every movie yeah. has flaws. Except I have four movies that I say don't have flaws. Okay. But even okay. that is like subjective because you know people see those movies and say like, oh, well, I disagree. I'm like. You can argue with your mama. <laughs> you can, that's fine. But to me, it's this perfect, This is the internet. Right? Don't you know that other people's opinion is fact? We're going to get into that. <laughs> We're going to get into that. I'm because, so excited. like, choosing a profession where I get to say my opinion on the internet for a living, it's uh -huh. very difficult. Oh, I'm sure. But uh, in terms of, like, my bias coming into a movie, like, there's movies that, like, I absolutely love that are dog doo doo horrible, right? <laughs> like, and, like, I acknowledge that they're horrible. Like, the Step Up movies after two, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. awful. Yeah. I love them so much. I love them too. They're so great. Bring it on. Bring it on. I love all the bring all it on the bring movies. it on. They're so duty. But I'm like, give me more of it. <laughs> give me more of the dude. Fast and Furious. I love Fast and Furious. Uh, Fast and Furious knows exactly what it is, right? It's all mm -hmm. fun. It's all like like the crazy suspension of disbelief action. These people should die ten times over, but they don't. <laughs> they just don't. They flew a car into space, right? And it's just like <laughs> none of this makes sense. None of it should work. But I I'm entertained by it, and so and that's like where my biases come in, where I say like, hey. I love this movie. I think it's amazing. However, like, I will point out, like, from a movie grading perspective, like, mm -hmm. in terms of, like, storytelling, like, screenwriting, uh, some acting bits, I could say what's wrong with it. Okay. But those may be the same reason why I like it, right? Okay. And that's where, like, subjectivity uh, against uh, personal bias, like, kind of comes from, okay. right? Um, I'm trying to think of, like, a movie that, like, oh, very recently, and I feel like... It's weird because I feel like I'll never live this down. Uh, I really like the Flash movie. Really? I really like the Flash movie. And what I do you know, like about it? I And I say this all the time and nobody ever listens to me because they just go, like, you like the Flash. Game over. But like, <laughs> maybe this is my chance to like actually explain. Yeah. I, I am a big fan of emotional consistency okay. and the emotional core of a movie. And I connect with that movie so much because I already connect with the Flash character. He's my second favorite DC character. No, he's my second favorite like comic book character ever. Um, first is Spider Man, and then there's the Flash. My brother named his red Tesla Flash. It's, it's the, <laughs> the Flash is the best. He has and a so, little Flash action figure on the top. I love it. <laughs> but continue. I love sorry, it. Sorry. No, but, but like, like I love how it's a story simply about a boy who would change everything in order to just have one more day with his mom. And I feel like those moments, that's an, and that's like the it's emotional. It's very human. It's very human, and that's the emotional core of the movie. And when it comes to that bit of the movie, I love that. It does it so well. Like the scene where he's in the uh, grocery with his mom both times where like he has to now let his mom like get the tomatoes, therefore leading to her death and him like letting go of her, but still having this very sweet moment of like, don't forget the tomatoes, mom. Like that, that uh. gets me every single time. On top of that, like I also have like, daddy issues uh so like everything that has to do with like his dad yeah. and him trying to save his dad from like a wrongful conviction i like that type of stuff and then i also like the element of like him reconciling with how annoying he's been as a character because as much as i love the flash ezra miller's version of the flash in the justice league and like snyder cut and all that it's been a very annoying character and i didn't like that portrayal i still don't like the way he freaking runs everywhere <laughs> gets on my nerves but i like the way that Ezra in that film played against himself, the annoying version of himself, and it caused him to not only mature as a character, which is what I've been waiting that character to do, but I liked how we got an origin story that wasn't an origin story by having a character interact with the origin of himself. Like and that, that and it's those elements that I really like. I could care less about like the supergirl of it all. The I think the movie like caves in on itself in the third act when it comes to its depiction of the multiverse and like closing the loop and all it just it's it's a mess sure right. there's bad cgi sure does it have a great like arc in the movie in terms of like am i enjoying it all the way through 
No, but it's that emotional core of a movie, which is why I love movies like Spider-Man 2 so much. It's the emotional core. The action is great, yeah, for sure. The acting is great, yeah, for sure. But it's all, it always goes back to like, do I connect with these characters? Am I feeling what they're going through? And when it comes to The Flash, I feel that 100%. However, not everybody feels that way. I get that. You know, well, every everyone probably like values different things within movies. Absolutely, like, yeah. Like I, I think that a lot goes into it. You like the emotional core. Some people like the relatability. Some people mm -hmm. like the outlandishness. You yeah. know, and it it just again it's it's very subjective. We're gonna take a quick break and hear from our sponsor of this episode, Factor. Eating better is now easier with Factor's delicious ready to eat meals. Every fresh, never frozen meal is chef catered, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. I personally have been enjoying Factors way before they even decided to sponsor us, and I've really been enjoying them. My personal favorites are any of the pasta with chicken and pesto sauce or tomatoes. I may or may not get multiple of the same ones in each week's orders. I've really struggled with food plans and figuring out easy and healthy meal options, and honestly, Factor has truly been such a game changer for both me and my husband. There's no prepping, no cooking, and no cleanup. Head to factormeals.com slash Rebecca50 and use code Rebecca50 for 50% off. That's code Rebecca50 at factormeals.com slash Rebecca50 for 50% off. This episode was brought to you by BetterHelp. How's your social battery right now? Are you setting healthy boundaries and letting yourself recharge? Or are you constantly feeling drained? Therapy can give you the self-awareness that you need to build a social life that isn't constantly spreading yourself too thin. Therapy is a powerful tool that I and many other individuals in the world have benefited from. And if you're willing to give therapy a try, why not try BetterHelp? BetterHelp is completely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch that therapist at any time with no additional charges. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WYB today to get 10% off on your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P slash W-Y-B for 10% off. Now. Back to the episode. But like That's the beauty of movies. What like you, you named some of the standard or some of like the kind of I can't even think of the word that I'm looking for, but like the standards that you might grade a movie based yeah. off of. Like what are like what is it that you grade a movie mm -hmm. and that you that you would review on or critique on? Like I think you said like acting, yeah. screenwriting, acting, like what screenwriting. else goes into like, that? Like so screenwriting is like storytelling is like a big part of like my grading critique. Like if the story makes sense, mm -hmm. right? That's really big for me. Uh, story and emotion, because uh, as a writer, like I was a copywriter for like five years. So like I'm like really dialed into like how a story should go. Uh, so those are like two of the biggest ones for me. If, th if a movie does really well in those areas, chances are like it could fail in some of the other ones. And I could be like, yeah, but I still liked it. Right. Right. Uh, but then the other ones like obviously like acting. Um, I love uh, editing. I'm starting to like get more and more into editing, especially since I started like editing myself. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, example of one that I've hated of a movie that I watched this year, Madam Web. Terrible I've editing. I've heard so much you about know? it. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it just so I know what everyone's talking it's about. It's like, and I and I don't want to make a I don't make a habit of like poo pooing on like people who put so much hard work into right, making a movie, right. right? Which is a whole another thing that goes into like reviewing movies in a public manner, right? But. Uh, the editing in Madam Web was so questionable. Like, I have questions as to why they chose to do it this way. Like, there were moments where every time someone, there was like a conversation that was happening, and every time the camera landed on someone on screen, it would do a weird push in. Oh. Like, it would like be wide and then push in for no reason. It wasn't to accentuate the scene. It wasn't to like put emphasis on words. They were just in the middle of the thing. And it would just go in, and then it kept going back and forth and doing that. So, oh. if like the podcast right now, like it would. Your camera, zoom in, and then it come my camera, zoom in, and then it just kept doing that back and forth, and this went on for like fifteen seconds. Oh, and I was just like, why is this? Like, what's the point? What's the point of it? And so it's like it's little things like that. 
Uh, a lot of people love the Equalizer. I'm not going to lie. I didn't see Equalizer 2 or 3 uh-huh. because there was this weird editing technique that, like, just gave B-movie for me. It gave you the ick. It gave me the ick. Yeah. The movie gave me the ick. It was, like, the scene where, and I know people are going to say, well, I love Equalizer. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm sorry. This gave me the ick. Like, there's a scene where the bad guy, like, takes off his shirt and then, like, he, like, like, sits down in a chair and then he like leans backwards and for some reason the camera like flips all the way backwards oh. to where it's now like upside down where he's like facing like this and I was just kind of like why what was that for what does it what's mean the point? what's the point and so it's editing is like starting to become like a really big thing for me and um also uh like character arcs like more specifically like if there are plot holes within those character arcs, mm-hmm. right? Like, there's some plot holes I can, like, get over. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you know about the Indiana Jones plot hole that, like, I didn't really think of until the Big Bang Theory pointed it out to me. Uh-huh. The whole, like, Indiana Jones has no, like, effect on the movie at all. If you take him out, the whole movie proceeds exactly yep. as the same, mm-hmm. right? I could get over that. I was just kind of like, yeah, but without but Indiana Jones, it wouldn't like, be an yeah, Indiana Jones, right? It's, it's, adds, it's cool. Yeah. But, like, certain things, like, and I pointed this out in a TikTok video, uh, <laughs> and I know it's a dumb movie to point it out to, but it it makes sense. The 2014 Ninja Turtles movie with Megan Fox. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Megan Fox, uh, she her whole character arc, the her whole thing is that she wants to be taken seriously as a reporter. She doesn't get the great right. jobs. She wants to be taken seriously as a reporter. You would think that like, oh, I have this photo of the Ninja Turtles. This will be have me taken seriously, right? Instead of showing her boss this photo that she clearly has on her phone. Like, here are the turtles that I'm trying to tell you about. Because she says, oh, they're ninja turtles. They're brothers. They talk. They do ninja stuff. They're mutants. You could just show it on your phone to your boss. Instead, she goes through this whole rigmarole of, like, I've been up all night, like, piecing together this whole thing. She creates that weird, like, Charlie Day board, like, on the back. Oh. And Whoopi Goldberg's like, what is all this? And she says, well, I, I saw the people that I'm looking for. She says, yeah, well, who's the people? And then she goes, it's this. And she points to a photo of a real baby turtle. Instead of going on her phone and showing these Ninja Turtles flipping on her room that she she had on her person, she shows this weird baby turtle from a zoo. It says they look like that. That's what they look like. And Whoopi Goldberg is like, what? I'm going to give you one more chance to, like, like walk it back. She goes, oh, they're ninjas. And then she gets fired. She says, I don't know why I got fired. No one takes me seriously. Because you didn't show them the photo on your phone. And then you turn right around. Go to the villain of the movie, which granted she didn't know it was the villain. Mm-hmm. You show him the photo that you could have showed to your boss, and then the guy's like, "Oh my god, Ninja Turtles!" And then the villain takes action because you were so stupid to show the the damn photo. So like, it's stuff like that. No, yeah. Where I'm like, like I can't get over, and I'm just kind of like, this whole thing is pointless, and it's just sometimes you could chalk it up to what I like to call movie has to movie. Yes. Other times, I'm just kind of like, no. I can't even think of any examples no. right now, but like, I know exactly what you're talking about because there's so many times that I'll watch a movie and I'm like, all they have to do is X, Y, Z. It's like, mm-hmm. it's not that hard. And yeah. my husband is always like, yeah, but then there wouldn't be a movie. And I'm like, well, then make a better movie. <laughs> that, that, exactly. Like, and, and sometimes it's just kind of like, if it's so egregious to where you're just kind of like, it's like it sticks in your head and you can't get over it. And I understand like people with like, you know, ADHD and things that like hyper fixate on yes. these type of things is different. But me, I'm, I feel like I'm very forgiving when it comes to a lot of those things. Mm-hmm. Again, I like the step up movies. Like I can deal with yeah. continuity issues. Yeah. I can even sometimes deal with bad pacing. But, and pacing is also like a big one. Like how fast the movie goes. Mm-hmm. Like does the movie feel like it's taking too long? You know, these type of things. Like, yeah. cause my time is valuable, which right. also works into like, you know, this. I'm like, if it needs to be three hours long, I'll watch a three hour long movie. I'll do it 10 times out of 10. But if it feels like it could have been like, this could have been an email, mm-hmm. I'm like, let's not. But uh, I forgot what I was saying a second ago. No, but, it's okay. you know, again, like, so yeah, so it's just kind of like, yeah, if, if it's too egregious of a, a plot hole, like, do better. Uh, you know, I can't get over it. And now the movie's ruined because you didn't bother to like hash out the details because you're rushing through it or just trying to create something you think everyone's going to like. Also, movies that treat, audiences like they're dumb is what is oh, something that yeah, I don't like. I hate that. Like they explain everything. Like, like over explain. Like over explain. I just recently saw a movie and I'm not going to say what it is because it's not out yet but there was like a moment where like the characters were over explaining like their purpose. They said we are the this group of characters and this person was doing this to us and I'm like I know this is a film for like the younger crowd but this is too much. It's too much. No. Like I'm pretty sure they could have figured that out. 
you know. You really need to hang out with Avery Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that you're saying, I'm like, like he when he finds like the egregious plot hole, plot holes. I can't even speak right now. Plot <laughs> holes like that don't even make sense. Like it angers him so much, and he yeah. finds them so easily, mm. like so quick and so easily. And I'll even like I'll be watching a movie, and he's like, "Why do you like that?" Because blah 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 blah, and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm like, I d- Don't ruin it for me. I, I do a lot of I do a lot of like, hmm, that's curious. And then like I'll try to like say like maybe it'll come back around. No, nope, and then and it doesn't just, come back around. Like I'm a big like wait and we'll see type of person. Mm-hmm. So I'll just go. Huh? Are they not going to explain that? No. Guess not. Guess not. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> my my favorite is when like there is a giant plot hole and I don't realize it until like after, like way after. Oh. Like Dark Knight Rises. Everybody loves Dark Knight Rises. Everybody. They love Bane. They love Batman. They love the whole. It's the best conclusion to a Batman trilogy ever. I'm like that movie does not care or treat you like a smart person. Like the fact that Batman is in a hole mm-hmm. with a broken spine for like months. He gets out of this hole, just charters a flight back to yep. Gotham, takes his time in his return to make a giant bat signal on the side of a building. <laughs> this 18,000 story building. You're back in Gotham. No, you got a time frame. And you're like, but first I got to let people know that like I'm here. I'm here. Like, let me just take my time to do this. And then, and then why did you send all of your policemen into a hole in the ground? You sent every policeman into a hole in the ground and y'all went. Nobody said, I ain't going in there, dude. Like, somebody's got to watch the station. Somebody's got to be stationed somewhere. No, you sent the entire police force in Gotham in the hole. And all Bane have to do is just blow the hole. And now your whole police force is down there. Like I never even thought about that. And people are like, oh, yeah, it's like, I'm like it doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. That would never happen. Don't even get me started on the whole, like, Talia Al Ghul, like, like reveal she's the big bad villain. <laughs> With an awful death scene, just it's the worst death scene I've ever seen in a movie where she's like, <laughs> it's literally, and I'm not exaggerating. If you can, it's, please put that side by side. Okay, okay. Like, I need that to be like, I'm gonna do it again. Like, it's gonna be real. This is her. <laughs> That's how she dies. <laughs> and I was just, and like, they don't, ex- like, she crashes, I guess, but it's not that bad of a crash. You could have walked away, but so she's like, my father's will. The movie has to movie. The movie has to, and that's the, that's the biggest example of movie got a movie. And don't worry, I enjoy Dark Knight Rises. I'm not saying I hate it. I still enjoy the crap out of it. But it's, but it's, it's the worst, like, it's the worst Batman movie in that trilogy. Oh, that's, it's so... It's, like, mind-blowing when you, like, think about it. Like, sometimes I'll just hear things about, like, shows or movies that, like, I never even thought about. And I'll just sit there and think about it for, like, three days later. Like, mm-hmm. the, uh, the, did you hear about the theory about UA and Avatar? UA and like wait when you say UA Princess are we UA. Talking, are you oh Princess UA I, I don't know why I thought uh, My Hero Academia no no no, no. <laughs> Princess UA yes Princess UA okay um, what, what's the theory so the, the theory is that if Aang were to not have gotten stuck in the iceberg mm-hmm. and were to live on his natural life in his time period that Princess UA would have been the next Avatar oh. because. It, the timing kind of ends up to when Aang would have been around 80, 90, something, whatever. Yeah. And when Yue was born, she was born, the idea is that she was born without the Avatar spirit because oh. Aang never died. And that's why she had to borrow from, from the, the moon, moon spirit. spirit. Yeah. That's a good Isn't theory. that crazy? That's and, a, I, and, I, and like the next cycle was water. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. And I never, like, I never thought about it. I saw it on TikTok the other day, and, like, even now I'm, like, getting chills. And my husband and I literally sat there discussing and debating it for, like, 45 minutes. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Like, I haven't, like, put up a Avatar theory in forever. That's a good one. That's a Use good it. one. Use it. That is a good one. I'm not going to steal anyone's <laughs> no, theory. I'm that's just, a, no, that, no, no, that, no. But that, I that's can send a, you the link if, if you want to stitch it. I have to find it. I'll probably, I'll watch it, and, like, maybe some things will, like, start popping yeah. off. But, like, because, yeah. like. Like I love the Avatar world. I, yeah. I absolutely love it. I love it. It's my it's Avatar. my favorite. Like next to One Piece, it's my favorite animated like show like ever. Yes. And like I used to like talk about how uh, 
Zuko's like character arc is the best like one hundred percent character the best. arc like 100%. like I put it up there with like Heisenberg and Breaking Bad like it's absolutely incredible it's so good how like he comes out like thinking that like the Fire Nation is like amazing and he wants to get back and it's all about his honor and pride but then like I feel like season two Zuko is like the best version of Zuko because this is like in transition Zuko he's starting to like he's starting to like see with his inner self he's like like the the freaking uh, I think the episode is called the it's not the storm. It's not the storm, but it's the episode where he's like sick. And like, oh, it's like right yeah. after he frees Appa. And like, he gets sick because he's having the internal battle. And then he has like the two dragons, one representing his uncle and one representing Azula, good and bad. And like, he's trying to decide like which way is he going to go. And I love how even before that, with like the Zuko Alone episode, where he's like in this Earth Kingdom town and he's looking at the literal damage that his country has been doing. And he's experiencing everything in the Earth Kingdom like, yo, we're not the best people like we're awful and so you have again season two is just a banger of a season it's i think it so might good. be the best season of avatar but when he's like has the choice when he um teams up when at, it's like when they're uh in um the cave yeah, yeah, yeah. with katara yeah, 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 and yeah. like he's kind of he's already been kind of good but then azula kind of gets in his ear again oh, and then he meets gosh, katara yeah. and then they're like basically like she thinks he could be good she tries to heal scar all that type of stuff the moment where he shoots the fire like in the middle of Azula and Aang's fight and he doesn't shoot either at either one of them. He just shoots in the middle because he's still very, very neutral. And so he has the moment where he's deciding like, okay, am I going to attack Azula with the Avatar or am I going to attack Aang? And when he goes for Aang, it's like, damn, like he... I, it just breaks it your just, heart. It just breaks your heart. It was like the ultimate backslide. It's like a relapse and that's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And I love how like, like the way he does that where... He goes after Aang, and then the camera cuts to him. It's not a kid. It's animated. But, you know, the camera's yeah, on him. Yeah, yeah. And the way he's looking, like, he's just shooting fire. Just like, <laughs> like, he's like, it's almost like he's being controlled. He's like, like manipulated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's like, I have to do this. And so I just love Zuko's, like, character arc throughout the entirety. But I think season two Zuko is, like, best Zuko. It's... Do, do you want a little small little funny Zuko theory? Yes, please. Um, I'll send you the link to this one too because this is not mine. I saw it. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that Zuko doesn't actually know any of their names except for Katara's um, and that's why when yeah. he shows up he's like, hey, Zuko, Zuko here. here. And the idea was that he <laughs> was introducing himself so that they would every, also so they actually know. and they didn't introduce themselves and that's why he's, he's like, just been chasing it's them this my whole time. mission to help the Avatar. Like he doesn't ever use Aang's name. Right. And even when he accidentally he didn't know burns, Aang's name. Even when he accidentally burns Toph's feet, he's like, hey, you, yeah. oh come back. God. Like he doesn't actually know their names. <laughs> I like that little, little wrinkle. <laughs> Because, like, he's just been chasing them this yeah. whole time. And, like, he's yeah. only been seeing Aang not as a person, but as a... Yeah, exactly. As, as, an, av as an avatar. As yeah. the avatar. Even when he's he speaking to his dad, he doesn't say, like, I'm going to help avatar. He says, I'm going to help the avatar. The avatar. Yeah, he, he, like, never uses their names. Huh. And, like, yeah. Huh. <laughs> You're right. He doesn't know their names. I'm subscribed to that idea. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, did he ever... Because, like, later he says their names for sure. Yeah, but, like, after he's but, like, been this, with them for a while. Right. Yeah, you know what? You like, know what initially I, he has no idea what their names are. You know what? I, you know what? I don't think it's funny. Like, <laughs> I don't think any chance this is true. But, like, I would like to think that he ended the series not knowing Toph's name. because <laughs> very possible. Because, like, he never went on a spiritual journey with Toph. No. Right? Now, but she still had the biggest crush on him. She, and she had a crush on him. <laughs> she was like, oh, I'm going with Zuko. Like, She's like, oh, Zuko, you saved me. To be honest. Just Toph, it, it's me <laughs> you know what to be honest i feel like and this is like my little theory that's like just now that's being okay. born right now i think toff like became a playboy because she got her heart broken twice <gasps> by both Sokka and zuko oh because remember i she also had a little crush on zuko as well yes. remember she was drowning and she's like oh zuko yes. oh, Sokka. she's like oh Sokka, you saved me oh, she maybe kisses it was Sokka. well she had a, i, I think zuko. she had a crush on both yeah. Because, like, she was like, oh, Sokka, you saved me mm -hmm. when she was drowning, mm -hmm. but it was actually Suki. And she was like, mm -hmm. oh, yep. you can go ahead and let me drown now. <laughs> you know, like. For some reason, I thought it was Zuka. I think but she no, might have had a crush Sokka. on Zuka, too. Okay, Zuko, yeah, too. Because, yeah. yeah, yeah. like, like she really wanted to go on this trip She's with She's like, Zuko. okay, it's my turn to go on an adventure with Zuka. She was the first one to, like, accept him, like, off rip. Like, yep. she was the first one. So, like, she was just kind of like, hey, like, you know, there's, you know, there's I love something that. here. Plus, I like, she, she has, like, Two different baby daddies, not married. Yes, you know what I'm saying. She, like she became a player. She became a player. Hey, Michaela. Yeah, Michaela. <laughs> I see you, Michaela. Like we know. Like, like maybe she could confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because I don't think there's ever been like I I kind of like read a little bit of the comic books as well. Uh huh. And like 
May and Zuko break up for a little bit, which yeah. is like, and they also tease like a Suki and Zuko type of what? Dead they tease like because Suki became like Zuko's like head guard, so they were spending a lot of time together. And there was a lot of moments where the, it could have went like one way or the other, especially after May broke up with Zuko. And then, Sokka, no. Yeah, and I don't think Sokka ends up with Suki either. I don't know. I'm oh, not, that I'm would not, be devastating. I know it was confirmed that May and Zuko did end up getting together again, but I think Suki and Sokka like broke up. Oh, that's so, so sad. And I think that was why, because like Suki was like going to work in the Fire Nation. Oh, under, I'm so. that, I'm so sad now. Yeah. I loved Sokka and Suki. I love Sokka and Suki too, but why would they do that? That my number that, one. That's, that's something that I cannot stand. And is when there's about like to say the same clearly, thing. clearly a fan favorite thing already happening, already going on, and they just like mess it up. You just for the drama, and no! it's always like, and it's always like off screen where it's like. Okay. No, like, I don't like it. I don't like it. When you fought, when you check in with characters like ten years later and they're yes. not together, and you're just like, like why? what happened? What was the point of that? There's no point. That makes no sense. Like I get it. Like yeah, you got sometimes things don't work out. But my thing is, and don't don't quote me on this, but my thing is, is like if you already like are together, right, mm-hmm. and you go through some shit like saving the world, that bonds you for life. Yeah. Like like at what point do you say? Nah. This isn't working out no more. No. It's it's like uh Transformers. Like Megan yes. Fox and uh Sam with Wiki, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, y'all save the world twice together. And you just just what? Like what like what happened? Like 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 you can come up with a different possibly happen? like I, I totally get that there's, you know, actors or actresses coming back or not coming back, but you yeah. can come up with something, something. else. Something. So I think like the explanation, because they replaced Megan Fox with Rose Huntington Wheatley. Right, right. Uh and I remember like the explanation in the movie was that Sam was dumped by Michaela. Right. And because like uh, and mind you, they made it seem like, oh, she just dumped us like that was it like and they were worried about like seeing another girl what if she dumps us like the last girl and sam says oh i just want someone who likes me for me so you're implying that the woman who literally traveled to egypt with you and fought aliens with you in la didn't like you for you didn't like you for you she was just there for the ride no what i know i cannot stand i like and it's like almost like they're trying to shade actors and actresses that don't come back exactly but it's like no you're just upsetting your audience because like we loved this relationship Mm -hmm. or we loved this or whatever you know that was the whole point of the second movie she was trying to get him to say that he loved her the dude the motherfucker died he died and came back to life and was like i love you like (sighs) i was like so what point do you go like Nah, hey, yo, I I'm know, not feeling it I know anymore. we went through some stuff, bro, and I know you kind of literally died in order to say that, but... Like, be creative. Not... Come up with something else. Yeah, like, so it's just... And don't I even get me started on How I Met Your Mother. Oh. Don't even get me started on How I Met Your Mother. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. even. No, like... no. Well, another question. Like, how does how do you make being a movie critic, like, a job? Like, how yeah. do you get paid for that? Like, how does that work okay so i'm gonna answer your first question because i realized we didn't answer the first question oh, of, like okay. how i fell into that and then we'll get okay into yeah that yeah one. go 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 uh because our you know our things ADHD, are ADHD. yeah i yeah, told yeah. you it was gonna happen no it's okay <laughs> i love it but uh uh so i got into it uh when i was working in advertising for those five years right and uh, i was working under uh truth.org getting the kids to stop vaping and stuff like that oh. and one day they came up to us and was like hey we just need a social media campaign doesn't matter where just come up with some ideas and, you know, we'll make it happen. So me and my partner had discovered TikTok at the time. We're like, oh, TikTok seems to be really popular right now. Let's download it. Let's study it. And let's try and create something on it. So we did that, got addicted to it. And then it was just a matter of time before, you know, I was just making videos yeah, on yeah. it. And then things just kind of took off from there. Um, so I was doing TikTok what felt like full time because I was still making like four to five videos a day. Uh, but I was also working in advertising as well. So I had this full-time salary job while doing TikTok, and it was very stressful because, like, I had deadlines over here, but then also, like, brand deals start to hit my emails up, like, all the time. And so it's, it's, it's funny when people ask me, like, how do I make money being, like, a critic or a reviewer? And to be honest, I don't like to call myself, like, a critic. I do call myself a reviewer because critic comes with this weird connotation of like, I know movies better than you, mm-hmm. you know, but um, monetizing, it doesn't necessarily have to do with like, I get paid to give my opinions on movies, which is like a lot of people's perception 
on people who monetize off of being movie people. Right, right. Uh, they always think like, oh, they give me money. I talk good about a movie. And so like the integrity is just broken down. Right. No, I get paid mostly through like the marketing of a movie, like okay. making people like aware that a movie exists. Um, and so a lot of those brand deals is what like pays a lot of my things. I get right. paid a lot more for like hosting. Okay. Uh, because of my new movie knowledge, and I'll probably host like a screening. Like tomorrow, I'm going to be hosting a screening for Kung Fu Panda. That's so. So cool. that's going to be fun. Uh, you know, I hosted the red carpet at the Oscars. I've hosted movie premieres, like things like that, because you know it's best to choose someone who knows about right what you're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. And that's where I feel like at most of my element is like monetizing off of like these partnerships with studios or like sometimes it's, like IMAX to like host that red carpet so i did i worked for imdb at the spirit awards very recently so those are like the really big ones is brand deals and that but uh never get paid for reviews it's like like that doesn't even exist that doesn't make sense it does no. it's, uh, it's one it's illegal um, oh it is okay yeah because okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense yeah because then like it's it's you know we know how we talk about movies are like subject subjective yes. like we're not allowed to like come in and be like this movie's great and get paid for it because then that like falls under like false advertising or things of that sort right so the the fact that people would be all like oh like you got paid to give a good review i'm like that is such doesn't happen it's the most paranoid thing ever and like part of me really wants to just like show the contracts that you sign that literally says like do not like talk good about these are things that you don't say because studios want to kind of like get on their own merit, right? right? That's why they show, like, the Rotten Tomato scores and they show, yeah. like, the blurbs and stuff like that. And that's why, like, a lot of times you have, uh, if a movie is, like, truly terrible, the review embargo won't be up until the day the movie releases. Like, Got it. we saw this with, like, Doom Part 2, like, weeks before it even came out. They were showing the movie all over the world, like, at premieres and whatnot. And they lifted their review embargo very early because the reviews were so positive so they were able to like flex like people are loving our movie here are the positive reviews whereas like a movie like madam web isn't gonna do it till the day it's of. like let's wait until the movie's out the day of <laughs> before we release these like awful reviews right interesting and so i just find it like really interesting how like you know and i think this is mostly for like a distaste for influencers and tiktokers mostly because um we're more of a frontward facing thing. Right. Whereas like I know movie critics who like write for a publication and like, you know, every now and then you'll see them on YouTube, like giving their reviews and stuff like that. But you don't see their faces a lot. Right. right. Like like Boris is a guy. He's a good friend of mine. He works at a Hollywood reporter and he comes up with like great articles, great reviews. But you don't see his face a lot. Right. Whereas like we on TikTok, like we're showing our face and like, hey, we like this movie, this and this and that. And that kind of creates a little bit of tension between like traditional media and like you know, whatever right. we do. Right. Because people then think like, oh, influencers get brand deals. Brand deals are paid. Therefore, like, this review must be paid. And so there's like a lot of distrust, which causes like a lot of stress within the community where it's like we're doing the same thing critics have always been doing. We just do it on a like a video format, right. you know? So monet- monetization is pretty easy as like a movie creator. It's just like, you know, if you make great content and you have like, you know, a lot of knowledge on movies, then brands will like kind of like approach you to kind of like market their movie. And we're no different than the billboard that you see. Interesting. Like when you're driving down the street or like uh, the TV spots that you see, it's just literally saying, hey, this movie exists. Uh, re- I, and if I am excited about a movie, I'll say I'm excited to see what it is. But then once the movie comes out, like, you know, you give your honest opinion on yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And so that's and that's where the integrity comes in. It's just uh, a lot of people also have this misconception of, if you talk bad about a movie, you won't be invited back to like a premiere. Like you have to talk good about it, but it's like no because they you know, want to change your mind. Ex- exactly, you know, like yeah. Hollywood Reporter, you know, Variety, uh, Den of Geek, like all these other places keep getting invited to these movie premieres while giving bad reviews. But for some reason, influencers are the ones who get a lot of the flack. Like, yeah. oh, you're just doing this for the. Blah, blah, blah. That's so interesting. So it's a very like weird like dynamic but it's also like what happened to youtubers when they started reviewing movies and stuff like that as well it's like it's a new thing like you know getting invited to premieres just started happening like in 2021 yeah so you know everyone's like still adjusting to it and i think you know internet is the internet like it's people are gonna say internet's gonna gonna internet (laughs) 
So yeah. have you ever like gotten a lot of backlash for a bad review or a specific review that you've given? Yeah. 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 Easy. Yeah. Uh, the Flash was one. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, again, <laughs> yeah. like like I said, like Do people I, get genuinely like mad about it. Oh, yeah. People take movies very seriously, wow. which is like, honestly, the, this movie, like I thought the movie industry, like trying to like act and stuff was cutthroat. Being a critic or a reviewer is very cutthroat as well. Really? It wow. really is. People are like, oh, you sold your soul to like talk good about this movie. Like we're seeing it with Dune right now where like a lot of people are praising the movie and people just want to like hate on something. Oh, so they're calling yeah. all the good reviews like it has to be paid because if I didn't like it, then of course like it's paid. Uh, I have so weird. I have people to this day. The Flash came out last year. I have people to this day telling me I can't trust you anymore because of The Flash. Like it's like – dude that's like so weird at the end of the day i just like the movie that you didn't like and like that's we could okay. just and that's like, fine it's like food like sometimes your palate wants something different than somebody else and that is okay there and is nothing is wrong with that like there are so many people that love like the the venom movie and morbius oh yeah. i hate those movies so much with a burning passion but i would never be all like <sighs> You're less. You than have. Like, to, like, you like, like that movie? Like, 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 like it's just it's such a weird thing, and so I just find it like very weird how like again getting on the internet and telling your opinions about anything is like yes, a, like a weird job choice because I feel that nature of the I, inter- I, internet. I, I do this. Uh, sorry, ADHD. My my thought just mm. came through. Um, I do this like series on YouTube called Am I the Bad Apple where pretty much people are like, here's the situation, here's what I did, mm-hmm. am I the bad apple? And I say it's so funny because. I start every single one of those videos with this little excerpt that's like a, hey, guys, just a reminder, we all come from different branches of the apple tree. You got to. So, like, we all have different experiences and perspectives. Mm -hmm. And to no end, I get two kinds of comments every video. One, we're not children. We don't need that explanation. We know. But then also, how dare you think differently than me? You're a monster. It's like, it's like. (laughs) They're right here, but I, like, I, but I feel like with the with the internet, it's so like everyone is so self centered in a way. Yeah. Like I, I, and I, I think that goes for like everybody. Like I feel like you know, uh, we as content creators have to be a little like. I'm, I'm making a video with me in it, and you know you have to have that level of that. But when it comes to like people just like experiencing the internet, mm-hmm. it's always from a singular mindset of like. I think you suck, right? <laughs> I already think you suck. Uh, this thing that you said angered me, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to do anything to try and figure out the other side of things, mm-hmm. right? Like, uh, for instance, like, and this was a very, very, like, recent thing, very recent thing. Um, and I admit, like, I 100% was in the wrong here. So I'm not, like, walking this back or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, I was at the Spirit Awards and I was like creating content like on the red carpet. Mm-hmm. And you know that a uh, credit card decline trend that was mm-hmm. going around? So I did one of those and I thought it'd be like really cool to kind of like tie that into like a movie version of that. Because like when I do trends, right, I try right. to make it like a movie Absolutely. version. Absolutely. It's your niche. Right. That and makes so sense. Uh, I tried to do like, okay, credit card declines. So they insert this thing in order to like take back the therapy that you got, right? Right, yes. So I thought like, what is a movie role that like completely like broke my heart, that like just wrecked me, right? Uh-huh. And Lily Gladstone, who puts in an amazing performance in uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, super heartbreaking. And like, I think about that role and it just breaks me down to tears every single time. And so Lily Gladstone was on the carpet and I uh, did, you know, did the trend where it was like me like looking at her walking in and I was like, oh, when your uh, credit card at therapy declines, so, but... Lily Gladstone reminds you, like, what she went through in this movie, oh. right? Now, obviously, like, Lily Gladstone is, like, Native American, and, like, you know, that's based off of, like, real events, right? Mm-hmm. And even though, yes, it's true, this performance is what broke everyone's hearts, and it was a very affecting performance. It's the reason why she's nominated for all the awards, and she's winning a lot of awards for it. Right. Like, there's still that extra layer of, like, are we talking about the performance, or are we talking about, like, what actually happened right. to her? And that part isn't clear and that's my fault for not making it clear right and so it was super tone deaf super dumb and so like you know i took it down within 20 minutes once somebody was like yo dude like that's not good i was like yeah okay yeah no you're right take it down it was down to 20 minutes that's all people needed that's all they were just kind of like horrible fucking person this guy like Mm. why he doesn't belong on the carpet mind you like i've got like i I haven't been seeing a lot of these videos because i've gotten really good at like skirting the issue but uh, at least like seeing it but uh, 
like, you know, people would tell me like, oh, yeah, some people are saying like you're not equipped to like be at red carpets and this and this and that. And they're also saying like you're also horrible and how dare you do that to Lily Gladstone. And I'm like, well, as for the like not equipped to walk red carpets, because a lot of people assume that was my first time on a carpet right. and that I didn't deserve to be there. I've been working and hosting for like four years now, like at wow. multiple red carpets. And that was like the one mistake that I made on the red carpet. Right. And it was a stupid fucking mistake. But that was like it was like. For people saying like, oh, he's not equipped. It's like nobody did the research to know that I've been doing this for right. a while. They like, see, like, it was like a, people you know. People tend to see five seconds of something on the internet. And, and they think like, that's the whole. I know what this that, is. I know exactly I'm what's going expert. on. I'm an expert. You know. I ha- this is my professional opinion, even though I'm not qualified to be a professional. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not saying nobody can have an opinion on it. Again, like I agree with what a lot of people are saying about it. It was a su- su- stupid thing to do. It right. was super wrong. And I own that. And I'm going to and I'm gonna keep owning that 100%. And I'm not going to stand by it. But, um, like, also, like, the whole, like, uh, Lily Gladstone thing. I'm like, I literally made, like, like four videos praising Lily's performance. Not only praising it, like, I made a whole video just shouting out, like, we're getting a ton of Native American representation. So we need to right. take a moment to, like, be happy with what we have in this moment Absolutely. in time. Like, we've had Prey. We had Killers of the Flower Moon. Like, there's a new movie coming out. So, like, I'm all, like I've always tried to kind of, like highlight representation as long as I've been doing this but then like that one moment they were just kind of like oh mm-hmm. you don't care about that and it's just kind of like all right you know so <laughs> okay like, yeah, right and that, obviously there's some people who like you know follow me and they see like the full picture and right. go like okay yeah that was fucking stupid dude but like we know like where you were trying to go with it this and this and that but then you have other people who are just like, don't give a fuck about where else you've been we're gonna this one you thing, have to, dude. You have to end. Your your time ends now. You know, so and and that's like the difficult part. It's like you're just under such a like microscope that like you do something, everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's not like I'm asking for people to look at those things because I never came out and made a video and was like, hey, like what about the other things that I did? It's yeah. like no, it's not about that. Because then people are gonna be mad. Or like, what are you trying to make it's an just, excuse? It, it, like, exactly. You can never win. Exactly. But like that's but the only reason why I'm bringing this up is to say like when it comes to dealing with these type of things. It's important to know that like there are people on the internet that are just gonna see the one thing and just be like, Yep, I got I got this mm, guy's number, worst. full full photo, you know what I'm saying? So and it, accepting that, I can accept like the backlash, I can accept like what comes with that, I can accept like all of that. And, you know, a lot of it comes from like people who just hated my movie opinions to begin with, you know? Like I'll I'll make a movie review just off of something random and they'll just say, You're still here. <laughs> nobody cares and i'm just kind of like, like okay if you don't then like don't be here it's yeah, not that hard exactly just keep keep just keep. go but then i checked their page and they're following me so i'm just kind of like oh my gosh just they're like, the worst. what are you here I for can't. what are you doing here well, like another question that i <coughs> have been getting from audience members is how do you approach reviewing a movie where mm-hmm. like you're clearly not the target audience Reviewing a movie where I'm not the target audience. It's like the exa- and I think there could be a lot of examples for yeah. this, but like another one of the examples they gave is like an adult Ooh. reviewing something that's definitely meant for a younger audience. Yeah. Okay. Or like a guy reviewing something that like like Mean Girls is clearly like has a target <laughs> audience. Yeah. You know, like yeah. how would you go about reviewing something where you are just not not that you can't enjoy it, but yeah. you're not the target audience. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: is like if you're not the target audience, there's still an opportunity to like become the target audience, okay. right? Okay. Like like someone who doesn't like quote unquote chick flicks, right? Like could watch the greatest chick flick of all time and be like, oh whoa, like, like that oh, changed. I like these. I, li- I actually like this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So like, not the target audience is valid, but at the same time, like, how do you get that target audience okay. if you don't have people who are not in it experience it, right? Okay. So uh, like, I wasn't the target audience for horror for a long time, but like, I kind of like fall in love with horror, and like, I'm like dipping my toe into being like a horror junkie at this I point, do right? Love horror horror is great. I it's love it's horror great. Movies. And so like, but it came from like watching something that wasn't in my target audience, right? I yeah. wasn't it for it. So, uh, but as when it comes to like approaching something that's not in the target audience, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the best example that I could think of is a uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, Five Nights yeah. at Freddy's to me is an awful movie. Right? <laughs> it wasn't that great. It was an awful movie. It's horrible. However, like I went into it knowing full well that this movie was created specifically for the fans. Yeah. It was just and they and like the creators have been very clear on that. Like, oh, we wanted to do something for the fans, but and it it does its job in alienating like other audiences or like if you don't play uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, like you're not going to know what the fuck's going right. on. Right. Right. And so I was watching. So like going into that movie knowing, OK, this is for the fans, but maybe I can get something out of it. 
uh, did not get anything out of it. Uh, walked out and was like, okay, I'll review this movie. And in my review, I try to preface that, mind you, I've never played Five Nights at Freddy's. Right. I'm not a fan of the franchise. I don't know the lore. This is my view of it without it. Because I truly believe that a movie should stand on its own, whether it's right. part of the target audience or not. That's just my belief. If a movie doesn't stand on its own as like a good movie, then you're just making fan films, right? And so when I reviewed the movie, I told everyone, like, hey, haven't played it. Da, 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 da. However, like, I think the movie's kind of bad. Uh, for these reasons, I laid out the reasons, and then people are like, oh, well, you got to do this, you got to play this, you got to do this. And I'm like, a movie shouldn't have to make you do that, and that's just, like, my response. Like, the movie shouldn't have to have you do, like, extra homework and, like, I get do that. all this type of I stuff. I feel that. Right? Like, I um, agree. It's like, it's like the uh, the One Piece live action. Right. Right? One Piece is one of the most daunting things to get into, because currently it's at, I want to say, like, 1,100 episodes, maybe? Wow. Yeah. It wow. might be it might be eleven hundred chapters, but it's it's approaching eleven hundred like episodes. Wow. <clears throat> it's a lot. It's a lot. But you know, live action comes out, it's only eight episodes. And so I would never tell people to like, you gotta watch all eleven hundred episodes in order to like get into this thing. Because that does a good job of standing on its own. Right. And it also makes new fans out of the one piece property. Right. Right. So a lot of people that I know saw the live action and then started the anime because even though right. they didn't, you know, know everything and do all, and obviously this is also made for the fans, they were like, I want to be a fan now. I am a fan now. That's so cute. So, like, I go into, like, a lot of movies that aren't <clears throat> the target demographic or me make it uh, the target demographic, hoping to become a fan of it. Interesting. Right? So, like, I, I want to, like, <clears throat> every movie that I watch. Right. right. I never go into something going, like, oh, yeah, I'm already going to give this a shit review. Like, no, there's right. no point in that, right? Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to have a good time. Uh, so I always try to go in like, dang, I really hope this is good. I really hope it surprises me. Like, I want to become a fan of this. And, and then if I don't, I'm just kind of like, okay, all right. It's fine. Doesn't ruin my yeah, life, yeah. you know? But for those fans, they're just like, how oh, dare you poop on this thing that I love? It's like, I think people need to realize, I'm not talking about you. Right. Like, right? You, you can have different interests than someone. Yeah. You, can, you don't have to love the same things. Like, right. You don't love the same exact things as your siblings. You don't like the same exact things as your partners. You don't like the same exact things as your parents. Like, exactly. It's okay to not like different things. Just like, because we didn't fall in love and I didn't marry you doesn't mean I don't think you're, like, awesome and I want to hang out with you every day. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I think you're a dope person. Like, yes. let's hang out. Let's be friends. Let's like, chill. I have I have friends who like they don't want they're not cat people they're dog people that's okay still cool friends dear you're, you're still a good person mm-hmm. just because you don't want to own a cat I don't want to own a dog I feel like people take it like very personal when you insult their movies which is why I love yes. movies so much <laughs> that's why I love movies so much which is why I have a podcast called Get Wrecked with Try Goofy yeah. where I talk about movies with your favorite people and it's how you like learn about some like people like it's like you find out their favorite movie and you learn a little bit about them and the way they talk about it like their true self comes out. So I get it when people like insult your movie. You're like, you're insulting you're me. Like, <gasps> yeah. I, I get that, yeah. which is why me and Dan got into it over, <laughs> over Wally. Wally. This is why I was like, bro, how could you? Like, how are we friends? <laughs> like, you know? But I was like, he, he explained himself, and I was like, I okay, get it. Okay. Okay. Well, so then I have I have two more questions for you. One mm-hmm. is kind of like a two parter. Okay. Is there any movies? that you've seen that you like expected to be really good and were super disappointed mm. and then vice versa any that mm. you were like you went into this thinking i don't have high expectations and then we're just like wow yeah that was a really good movie yes what would they be so i three movies come to mind so there's two that like i thought were going to be amazing and mm-hmm. then just, i walked out like this is awful Which uh ones? sucker punch okay. okay i did not like sucker punch at oh. all and it had like such a good premise uh, it was about this uh, this woman who gets sent to this like insane asylum, and uh, she meets these other girls. And basically, in order to escape the insane asylum, she has to like basically disassociate mm-hmm. into her mind and like turn these like real world scenarios into like these fantasy adventures. Uh-huh. So it's almost like you know how like the Rugrats was back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah. How, like I everything they did, Rugrats. they were like they, yeah. it was like in their mind they yeah. were doing something else. It was like that, but it was like gritty. It was like oh. it was directed by Zack Snyder, and plus it was like women empowerment like all the main cast is all women and uh oscar isaac is in there somewhere uh so like the movie was just the its execution of ideas just wasn't it the pacing just wasn't it and it just at the end of the day was just very like boring it felt like very episodic the fantasy sequences and i was just kind of like all right it was very i I had high hopes mind you they all like a good trailer song will get me into a movie so quick 
yeah. and they had Silver Sun Pickup's Panic Switch. I was like, give me this movie now. And like it just it just disappointed oh, me. That's so upsetting. Uh another another movie that disappointed me. I think I, I thought I had it. Um I did have it in my mind. That's oh, uh it was Olivia Wilde's um Don't Worry Darling. Yeah. That was my number one most anticipated movie of I that didn't year. hate it, but it definitely wasn't what I expected. Yeah, no, it just the, I don't know what I was expecting. Well, it I think there didn't... was there was so much anticipation, not only for the movie because the trailer was really good, yeah, but yeah. also the drama surrounding the launch of the movie, I think really hyped yeah. everyone up. Yeah. And then it was like, I don't, again, I, I'm not, I don't think it was a bad movie, mm-hmm. but it definitely felt anticlimactic. That's, and that was like its biggest crime for me. It was yeah. like, this movie is built, and the trailer built this like, crazy yes. sci-fi mystery mm-hmm. and i wanted to know so much about like what's going on in this town yeah. where like the eggs don't even have and she's finding she's like kind of waking up like oh wait we don't have eggs like yeah you know what do they do for work da, da, da. you still don't find a lot of these things out yes none there's of the so char- many unanswered questions so many unanswered questions there's so many like non-engaging characters just very bland like harry styles who i think like has the chops to be like a great actor but this movie he just let me down like there's yeah. a weird like tap dancing sequence that's yeah. weirdly shy and weird place and I'm like what does this tap dancing sequence mean why is it shot so ominously see for me it's all the unanswered questions yeah. I don't I don't like the unanswered questions because then I'll go home and like with my ADHD I'll sit there and think about them for hours yeah. I don't want to have to do I'm that I'm just like what what why did this happen why did it, why did this not happen like it just it will really like yeah. wreck my brain you know yes. uh, as far as a movie that like surprised me uh <laughs> yeah it's this movie called Game Night Okay. I had no expectations for this movie called Game, like none at all. And I don't know if you've ever seen it. I I have something in my head, but I don't know if it's. It has a uh, Jason Bateman, Rachel McAdams, and it's about this couple who like meet playing games, and so they're very obsessed with like yeah. hosting game nights and things like I that. I think I did see this. It's it's I great. liked it's it. It's a great movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, like yeah. I wa- I think about the. Um, the chase sequence in the house like there's this single where they're like chasing with the egg it's like one take and i'm like this is a comedy like this is like incredible that and tag like both of those movies just like funny enough they're both like games but uh game night like got gets me and um there's this one scene with jesse plemons that like i think about and i quote every single time and it's like him at the mailbox with his like little poodle dog (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, they don't want to invite him to game night, but he wants to go. But he's like this yep. very weird and creepy guy. And like mm-hmm. the scene is just so creepily silent. <laughs> like the only thing you can hear is like the wind and like like birds and stuff. <laughs> and like he's he's like looking at them and he goes, are you guys going to host another game, game night? night? And so... <laughs> and they're just like, no, nope, we're just no, going to have a quiet day in the house. No. And then he just, si- he just like pauses and goes, three bags of Tostito scoops. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, there was a deal. Yeah. There was a deal. Yes, three for one. Three for one? Yeah. <laughs> How would that benefit Frito-Lay? <laughs> like, his delivery, everything about him in that movie yeah, is it's so perfect. great. It's perfect. And I did not expect that. I thought it was just going to be, like, another kind of, like, whatever comedy, like, very bland, like, whatever, whatever. But every character is great. Like, the, it was really good. The mystery is really cool. The stakes are great. Like, Rachel McAdams is perfect. She, I love her. She is I so I love great. her. She is, okay, if you love her, please, like, you ever watch the show Dave? No. So Lil Dicky is, like, my favorite person. Uh-huh. Hi, Lil Dicky. Hi, Dave. Uh, <laughs> but, like, uh, he has a show called Dave. It's, like, Atlanta, but it's, like, his okay. version. It's, like, him basically becoming a rapper, like, his life story, that type of thing. Right, right, And in season three, he's now, like, kind of, like, fully famous. He's, like, newly fully famous. Okay. And so he goes to the Met Gala. He meets Rachel McAdams because, like, the whole season, his whole arc is, like, he's trying to find love. And, like, every girl that he's trying to find, like, the description is always, like, a Rachel McAdams type, like girl next door, like Aww. brunette. Like he really wants like a Rachel McAdams type woman. But then he meets Rachel McAdams at the Met Gala and she's actually kind of like flirting with him and everything. So it becomes like a real like, wait, he just met this other girl. Wait. Is he going to get with the Rachel McAdams type or the real Rachel McAdams? And it becomes like a full thing. And he actually makes a song in the movie, in the show called Mr. McAdams. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about how bad he wants to be Mr. McAdams. Oh it's a God. great song. And then he actually gets her in the music video for that song. And then he just released his album where that's like the top that single. Is, okay, I need to look it up. It's, I need to look it up. It's so great. And then that like segues into like the last episode where uh, in the middle of the song, like he's talking about like how he could be her Brad Pitt. 
But then Brad Pitt literally walks into the music video, like actual Brad Pitt. And he goes, no, F Brad Pitt, don't think about him. And no, then like, me, 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 me. and so they get rid of him. But then he comes back and Brad is like, oh yeah, do you need me to do anything else? He says, no, I think it, the less we use you, the better. <laughs> <laughs> but they end up using him for the whole episode. So Brad Pitt is in an entire episode of Dave as a main character, which is that like is incredible. so funny. And it's all because of Rachel McAdams. I love her so much. And she is the best. You know what movie surprised me? And I don't know why it did. Like, I genuinely don't know why I had such low expectations for this movie. Mm. But it was Elemental. Oh. I have no idea why and it's a I Pixar assumed... movie. So the fact yeah. you have like low expectations. I don't. I think it's because like. That's actually really refreshing. To I hear. think lately, even in this breaks my heart because I'm a huge Disney person. Same. I love Disney, yep. but you know, like sometimes they have their little. We've we're kind of like in a little bit of a recession with yeah. Disney right now. I mean, we had it in like the mid 2000s, like it happens. Yes, yeah. and so. like I loved Encanto, but like I, ooh, yes, a lot of yes. the, like Encanto, like I still will belt. We don't talk about Bruno Same. in the shower. I love. Oh, I love but Encanto. A lot so of much. the stuff lately just hasn't. It just, hit it just like Strange way. World didn't really hit yeah. for me. Like, like you know, it, uh, uh, didn't, Raya didn't yeah, do anything I for didn't me. He, and I haven't seen it yet, but I haven't heard great things about Wish either. Um, You're not going to hear a lot of great so things from sad. me. Yeah. So Especially like, since that was like their 100th celebration right. movie, too. Yeah. So, like, I didn't have a lot of expectations <coughs> for Elemental, and I even just refused to see it for a while because mm. I was like, I can't have my heart shattered again yeah. by another. Disney let down. movie yeah. and I watched it while we were bro- abroad like a few months ago and I was like oh, I lo- like I loved it yeah I loved that movie it was see, so good see, I really I really liked Elemental I don't think that it deserved a best animation nomination over really? like Ninja Turtles okay okay you know I okay. feel like I feel like there were other animated films like just all year round that was like slightly okay. better than Elemental but I really liked Elemental like I remember I saw they showed us the first like 20 minutes at a CinemaCon Aww. and I walked out of that 20 minutes going like because everybody was like kind of like already kind of like pooping on it just like oh really yeah people were already just kind of like because a lot of people just thought it was like a rehash of zootopia because they saw the big city and they were just uh, like oh it's zootopia but with elements whatever but i watched like the first 20 minutes and it's very clear that it's like an immigrant story you know and like i really liked the twist i like i love the sight gags i love the puns all throughout that movie and i love the way that world kind of worked right yeah. and it was like classic pixar they create a world and they make it like our world, but not our world, yes. you know? And so, that, mind you, that's in the first twenty. So I walked out of there and I made a video. I was like, yo, this this thing was dope. Like, people don't know what they're getting into. Like, da, da, da. And then as the movie went on, like, I just felt like adding in the whole element of like, oh, we need to get permits and we need to make sure that the bridge and da, da, da. I was just like, I don't need this. Just either commit to the interracial love story. Yeah. Right? And that's what I like about the movie. The interracial yeah. love story and the fact like, oh, fire and water should get together. But it's like the will they, won't they? But like I didn't know like how much trust Pixar had into telling that story to children. Yeah. If that made sense. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, kids, you know, should I don't want to say shouldn't. But like thinking about relationships on that level, specifically interracial relationships. Yeah. Like I could tell Disney was like, let's do it, but let's not go all the way there. Yeah. Right, because I feel like if it was more geared, if it was more like The Incredibles, yeah, where like we saw the true like what marriage looks like in that movie, I feel like if there was like some trust like that movie had, yeah, Elemental would have been like a lot better. But instead, they added this whole like, oh, the air people have a team called the 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 toots, like the the something <laughs> toots, because it's a fart joke, and I'm just yeah. kind of like, it's funny, like you know, <laughs> but and my job, like the child of me is like laughing my ass off, but I'm just kind of like. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. It's like it's like bittersweet. It's like bittersweet. Yes. But here's the thing, man. Like, no matter how bad Pixar is, and Elemental isn't a bad movie at all. But no, even if Pixar is like at their lowest, even even if if they're at their, I want to say like Good Dinosaur. I'm not gonna say Cars two because I didn't cry at Cars two at all. It was the one Pixar movie I never cried at. Really, the one pic out of like, there's nothing for me to be like, ooh, Mater. But uh, even like Good Dinosaur, which I do not like that movie at all. I still teared up at Good Dinosaur. I will still tear up even at the lowest of Pixar movies. They know how to pull up the They know how to turn they, it. They're, they're they just like, play it like a fiddle, They come man. out of bed sick, sniffling, and they're just kind of like, emotion. And just, <laughs> walk, and just walk away. And I'm just like, how did you do that? They're like, so good at I'm that. I'm like, how am I like not enjoying myself in this movie? But like, 
I still feel like that oh, connection. You that's know, that's so powerful. It's it's man. really powerful. I I cry a lot during Soul. Yes, I feel like Soul. I did too. I feel like I Soul did. is mm-hmm. like one of the biggest like movie watching tragedies that we could have experienced because it came out during the pandemic. They couldn't put it in theaters, yeah. and so there wasn't like a ton of buzz like going into it. It's, and it came on Disney Plus. And they released it on Christmas, so it was like, oh, you either you watch it with your family or you don't. But I watched that movie, and it legitimately, it so like, good. changed my life, like, watching that movie. One, because, like, Black Lead and, like, the barbershop scene and everything that goes into it that was black in that movie. I was like, yeah, like, this is how you do it. <laughs> but just, like, tackling the concept of, like, what is the meaning of life, which is a heavy concept. It's so heavy, but they so did heavy. it so well. And they do it so well. Wow, and they made it so, like... It's so heavy, but they made it seem like it could be light. Exactly. Exactly. And like, I love the scene where like Joe is like on his piano. Again. <laughs> where he's on his piano and he's thinking about like his life. And he's like thinking about like, there's a scene where like he's like riding his bike and he's like looking at the trees and looking at the wind, the way he like breathes in. Oh, I'm tearing like, up. Like, you know, he's looking at the fireworks. There's a moment, oh my God, there's a oh. moment where he's with his dad. And his dad, he's in his dad's lap and they're both just like, listening to this record player and I'm just like like just even thinking about I'm tearing so up right now. It's so sweet. It's so I'm sweet. already it's, there. I'm it's, like waiting for my mascara to just run. It's such a powerful movie and like it's it boils it down to like just a simple thing. The point of life is to just live it. Yeah. Right? Because we're not always going to be here and it's like enjoy that fucking slice of pizza. Like enjoy that pecan pie. There's like oh, oh I'm sorry I could get into this all day. But like when he's like looking at his life and he thinks like my life didn't amount to nothing. This is just like me eating pecan pie this is just me like riding a bike like i didn't do anything i didn't accomplish anything and then he thinks about those same scenes and there's the same moment where he's eating that pecan pie and it's that like silent like joy that like savoring just uh yes like this is i'm just like i think it's so good it's like top five at like top three top five pixar movies that people aren't like putting up there because it came out on Disney Plus. I think oh, it's up there. How can they that, I love no, it. That's I still listen to the music. Like the uh, composers Atticus Ross and Trent Rasner, who also did the music for the social network, mm-hmm. did the score. That epiphany scene, like it when you get a chance and you want a good cry, you get in your car, go on Spotify, you turn on Epiphany from Soul, you will literally just start like it would just pull like tears like out of you. If you need a good cry day, that's what you need to yeah. do. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> I, I do it quite often, to be honest. Like, when I'm in my car and I'm by myself and, like, I'm having a hard day, like, I put on, like, that, like, that. give myself a good cry, feeling so much better. That's so sweet. Yeah. Well, do you have any last, because I know that you have to go soon. Do you I have do. any, it's it's 12. Ooh, okay. So do you have any, do you have any <coughs> last minute, like, any misconceptions or anything else that you want to clarify or leave listeners with about what it's like to be a movie critic or anything like that? And uh, if you don't, you can just quick round your perfect movie for sure are perfect i just want to stress enough that critics do not get paid to give good reviews heard and if you do that's illegal you can't do that yeah <laughs> very very bad yeah uh we're just normal people who like movies and we're just putting our opinions out there so like you know there's no ulterior motives there's no uh we're not trying to be actors we just have a love for film and we just want to like share it with everybody else and that's literally all there is to it that. That's that's all there is to it. Uh, other than that, uh, get wrecked with Straw Hat Goofy. Uh, it's a podcast that Woo! I have. I talk with my friends. Hopefully, we can get yeah. our good girl yeah, here. Yeah, be there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah tomorrow that'd be great. Uh, we'll set up a time Heard. for that, and it'll be great. Oh, yeah. uh, also, like, think of uh, what what is a movie that like changed your brain chemistry? I must know. Mean Girls. Mean Girls. Yeah, we could talk about Mean Girls. Yeah, I love Mean Girls. Yeah, did you like, like the, the musical? I. Haven't I refused to see it yet because? <laughs> Did you see the TikToks about Revenge Party and the differences? Well, so like my husband, so my my husband currently does pro pickleball things, okay. but he was an attorney, and before that, he was a music major. Oh, okay. So like we listen to, well, we do a lot of musicals in mm. our household, and so I've already known that Mean Girls was a musical, right? And so we, especially him, like he loves those songs, mm-hmm. so seeing the clips and the comparisons on i'm like i don't yeah i'm scared to get my heart broken yeah <laughs> i will i will tell you Ali Cravalho and um renee rap 
crushes. I I'm such a Renee Rapp fan. Yeah. Because I she was one of the Broadway stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. like I know she'll kill it. I've I've had the privilege of meeting her like multiple times. Yeah. Like to the is point she where nice? she'll like recognize my face. She is so nice. Oh, I like love it's that. like it's like she didn't have to be nice to me. Right. And she still chose to. I and love she still that. Chose, and I every time that. she sees me, she's super happy. Even if we talk for like five minutes, she's just so she's she's literally an angel. I love oh, literally an so angel. Happy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't say that about everybody that I meet, but, but she deserves it. She deserves she deserves all the flowers and all the success in the world. That makes me so she's happy. the best. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. No, today. Of course. Of and course. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. I hope you had a really great day. I can't even think of what I'm saying. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we had a really great we, day. Yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day and hope to see you all next week. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, my lovelies. Bye.